welcome to Noble Character Crafts. My name is Amy and I'm coming to you from Eastern Nebraska where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Friday, August 30th, 2024. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you really enjoy this episode. This is a channel all about my crafty life and today I have knitting and crocheting to share with you all. I will have links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode. I have a few finished objects to share with you all today. The first one I am wearing, it is this Odyssey shawl, which is a free pattern by Hohi Locatelli. And I knit this for a friend of mine named Eva. She purchased this yarn from Hobby Lobby and then asked me if I would knit her a shawl using the yarn. The yarn is Yarn B, authentic hand dyed in the hibiscus palm colorway, which is a fingering weight yarn, 100% superwash merino wool. I held the yarn double, so two strands of the fingering weight yarn to get a DK weight gauge, which is what the Odyssey shawl calls for. I used the recommended needles, which were US six four millimeter needles and I still have about 100 grams left from I started with a total of four hanks of yarn and it only took I didn't actually weigh the full shawl but I weighed my leftovers and it's a little over 100 grams left over so I think it would be maybe tight but I think it could be made out of three skeins of fingering weight yarn held double so that would be nice if it would work out like that, but it might be a little bit tight. <laughs> so I don't know if I'd want to risk it getting to the end and running out. But anyway, I'm really happy with how this turned out. You know what? I said it was US 6. I think I'm wrong there. Let me double check my needles. Now I'm thinking it was US 8. Yeah, sorry. The needles I used were the recommended still, but they were US 8 5 millimeter needles. Sorry about that. I started this shawl on May 17th and finished it on August 24th. I was not working on it very uh, consistently a lot of times. So, you know, it took me over three months to make it, which it shouldn't take that long, but I wasn't monogamous in working on it. So it can be worn like this as um, wrapped around this way. So the middle of the shawl is here. And then I just wrapped the two ends around to drape in the front and it works really well like that. It's very easily wearable in that way. And then you can also, of course, wear it in a lot of different ways, but the two, you know, typical ways I suppose people would wear it are just over the shoulders then as well. There's this beautiful lace pattern broken up by garter stitch sections. So there's three sections the original pattern calls for you to use a different color for, for each of those three sections, but I just used the one colorway throughout. Last time I was, I think just starting this, the third garter section maybe, I can't quite remember, but I um, didn't have a, too much more to work on it. And I was excited to see the finish line near, I was nearing the finish line and so I, focused on trying to get this one done as soon as possible, I guess. You know, once I can see the finish line, then I'm more motivated to continue working on it more monogamously so that I can get it done. I really love the Pico edging that it finishes off with. That was super easy to do. A lot of times Pico edging can be quite finicky to work, in my opinion, <laughs> but this one was super easy. It's only like every, there's quite a few stitches in between each little pico. I don't know, it was just super easy to make, to do that bind off. I thought it was gonna take a while and before I knew it, I was already done with the pico bind off and I was like, oh, well that was a lot easier than I remember ever being in any other project. So that was a pleasant surprise. Anyway, it's, it's just a really nice size crescent shape. It was knit from the top down and yeah, it just works up really beautifully. And of course it would be great to use um, three, 
I suppose it's call, it calls for three 100 grams of DK weight, so that makes sense that I use 300 grams of fingering weight as well. Anyway, it would be great, of course, to use up three different skeins of DK weight yarn that you have in your stash, and or you probably could use three different skeins of fingering weight and just hold them double too, of course. I really like it. I think it's beautiful, and I hope that Eva likes it as well. Like I mentioned before, the lace section was the lace sections were a lot more easier to work up if I put stitch markers in between each lace repeat. So I recommend that if you try out this shawl or in any lace pattern, it really is helpful, in my opinion, to put stitch markers in between each lace repeat. So you don't have to do quite as much counting. And you can keep track of where you're at in the pattern a little more easily. So I think that's all I have to say about this one. I think I covered it all. I'm really happy with it. And I could definitely, I'll have to try to remember this pattern because it was a great one and it is free. So that's always wonderful. And it's beautiful. It, you really can't tell much of a difference between the front and the back, except for in the lace section. Um, the stockinette stitch is more prominent here. So just the plain knit stitches are shown more. And then on the wrong side, you'd see more of the pearl bumps, but it's really not that noticeable between the front and the back, I don't think. Both sides are beautiful. So I would like to wear this more, but it's still too warm to wear, to wear this throughout the entire episode. So <laughs> I was also able to finish some socks so the first pair I have to share with you is this fun pair that I worked up using some yarn that I was gifted in a swap several years ago. The yarn is by the string thing. One, yeah, this, the one string, I'm sorry. The yarn is called the one string charm base. 90% superwash targi wool, 10% nylon in the frosted plums colorway. Um, so this is a little bit of a, just a tiny bit of a thicker fingering weight yarn. And, but I still worked it up like I would normally do for my socks. I cast on 60 stitches using US zero two millimeter needles. I did two by one ribbing for 20 rounds and then just did plain stockinette for the legs. I did 70 rounds for the legs and then did slip stitch a slip stitch heel flap and gusset decreases. I did 50 rounds on the foot of the sock before I started adding in my slip stitch detail to the ball of the foot. I don't suppose I've made a pair of socks for myself in a little while, so if you haven't ever heard me talk about the little slip stitch section that I put on the ball of my foot of my socks, I just do basically the same type of pattern that you would do on a slip stitch heel flap on the last 30 rounds of the foot of my sock before the toe decreases. So just on the bottom of the sock, those stitches, I do slip one, knit one across the bottom of the foot for one round. And then on the second round, I just knit all of the stitches and I repeat those two rounds for a total of 30 rounds to give me a little bit of extra reinforcement on the ball of my foot because that is where I tend to wear holes in my socks most quickly. Otherwise for the pattern, I'm basically following the pattern like a the free patterns that Kay Litton of Crazy Sock Lady has available on her in her shop. I follow her heel instructions and her toe instructions basically. So although I do have a different stitch count, like I said, I cast on 60 stitches, but basically I'm doing her instructions because that's how I, well, I've just got her instructions memorized. So I love how these worked up. I think they're, the colorway is so beautiful and I'm really happy to have them finished. Let's see, anything else on those? Did I say I started these on July 20th 
and I finished them on August 19th. I also was able to finish the first pair of socks from the Colorwork Cuff Club by Summer Lee Designs. This is one of the two charts that she released for the month of August. And the Colorwork Club, Cuff Club is a pattern that can be purchased on Ravelry. And it, by the time this goes out, probably it will be September, probably. Um, or maybe, usually my videos take a while to get uploaded. So anyway, I'm assuming this will, it will already be September by the time you're watching this. So there was a reduced rate for the Colorwork Cuff Club for the month of August, but even the regular rate I think is only $14 and it includes a year's worth of Colorwork Cuff designs that she will release a new design each month for 12 months. So it had, comes with a basic sock pattern and then she will just send an update including the new month's color work design for the top, you know, the cuff section of the sock. Usually it will just be one design per month, but for the month of August, she released two color work designs. And this is the first one that I started. I also made some adjustments. I, ma I made some adjustments to this pattern by again casting on 60 stitches instead of the recommended number. And she does call for a two by one ribbing. So that is what I did, uh, knit two, purl one. I knit for a total of one inch. Her recommendation is to do three quarters of an inch of ribbing. And then, so I cast on the second size well, I shouldn't say that. I cast on 60 stitches, which is close to the second size. And then I increased to the large size for the color work because I have made color work socks in the past and they've always been too tight for my feet. So I was really trying to make a pair of socks that will be able to fit me um, even after washing and wearing them. I tend to have in the past made color work socks that fit me pretty well, although probably quite snugly when I first make them, but then after I wash them, they shrink up a little bit and then I'm not able to wear them much longer <laughs> after washing and wearing them for a few times. So anyway, when I got to the color work section where I tend to have a really tight gauge and have a hard time getting it over my very big instep, I increased to the number of stitches that you need for the large size. I cast on my stitches using my US two, I'm sorry, US zero two millimeter needles like I normally do and 60 stitches like I normally do. But then when I got to the color work section, I increased my needle size to a US 2.5, three millimeter set of needles. I used nine inch cir circulars which I tend to knit a little bit looser with nine inch circulars also. So at that point when I did the color work, I used nine inch circulars instead of magic loop, which I normally do. And I also flipped my work inside out so that my strands, my color work strands were being stretched across the outside of my work. So I was still working on the right side, but the right side was flipped to the inside of my tube and I was working, I was letting the strands of color work be stretched around the outside of the tube as I was working that section. I hope that makes sense. But that was all to help me get a really loose gauge and fit around the color work section. And I think it's worked out pretty well, but I want to, I haven't worn or washed these yet. And I want to do that as soon as possible to make sure that the stitch count will continue to work for me as I will hopefully be working through the rest of the Color Work Cuff Club throughout the year. That's my, that's what I'm hoping to do. The yarn that I used for this is Knit Picks Stroll in the, I'm sorry, Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in the Dill Heather colorway. Oh, do I have that written down? That is 65% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and 10% Donegal Tweed fingering weight for the main color. And then the mini that I used for the color work section is just a 
some yarn that I had dyed myself a long time ago and I had a little extra ball of that in my stash. And I think the colors work up really beautifully together. I did, after the color work, I last time I recorded I said I was going to make these socks as long as my normal socks, but they are a bit shorter than my normal socks just because as I was trying them on, um, I was afraid if I made them too long that again, I wouldn't have quite as much room to go over my calf in the color work section. So I made them just a little bit shorter than I normally would. I did 20 more rounds of plain stockinette after the color work section, which is also longer than what Summer Lee knit up in her sample. But of course you can just knit them to whatever length you like. And to be honest, I didn't really look at her instructions for the heels or toes either. I again, just followed what I have memorized, which is the instructions from uh, Kay Litton's patterns. So I did again a slip stitch heel flap and gusset decreases. And again, I added that slip stitch detail to the ball of my foot. I started these on August 5th and finished them on August 25th. And I'm very happy with how they turned out and I'm super excited and hopeful that they will fit even after washing them. So I'm planning on putting these into use as soon as possible because I wanna cast on the socks that come out, the new you know pattern that comes out in September and I wanna make sure that my stitch count is gonna work out for me with that month as well. And I also finished the other pair of Colorwork Cuff Club socks. So like I said, Summer Lee came out with two designs for the month of August. This is a design that was inspired by granny stripes, like crocheted granny stripes. And I made a lot of modifications to these because I decided to work up these socks using fingering weight yarn held together with a lace weight mohair. And I love how they turned out. They are so cozy. I am definitely planning on making more socks using this yarn combination because I just love the way that they feel. They're so, they're just so soft and cozy. It's wonderful. So I think for winter time, they're gonna be so nice. Since my gauge was, you know, different using that yarn combination, that's why I needed to make quite a few modifications to these. So the needles I used for the majority of the sock were US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needles. Then for the color work, I went up to US 4, 3.5, US 4, 3.5 millimeter needles for the color work section. I cast on 48 stitches and did the two by one ribbing again for an inch using some bare colors of both fingering weight and mohair, bare colored, you know, not, not undyed yarn. And then I went into the color work section and just used a lot of scraps of both mohair and fingering weight yarn held together. And I love how those colors worked up together. I also made a modification, oh, I'm sorry, I should say, for the color work section, I increased my stitches to 60 stitches, which worked with the pattern repeat. And um, again, went up to that larger needle size. And then I did make a modification to the actual color work. She has you use a different color for this last little half. Like there's basically a color change right here, but I decided to just use my main color for that last section of the color work so that I wouldn't have like a half granny stripe little section. She also repeats her colors a little differently and I just used six different colors for the color work section. And anyway, then I did again, well, after the color work section, I did, oh, shoot. I <laughs> misspoke on these. I was looking at my wrong, I was looking at the wrong notes for these. After the color work section on these, I did 40 rounds of plain stockinette before I did the heels. These are the socks that I did 20 rounds of plain stockinette after the color work before I went into the heel flap. Um, and then for the foot, I only had to do 63 rounds for the foot before I did the toe decreases. I just wanted to make a note of that because on my normal socks, I do 80 rounds on my foot. So 
like I said, I am planning on doing more of these in the future, so I wanted to take good notes on my stitch count so I would know how to repeat that again. The main color that I used it in the you know majority of the sock here is again Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in the Marine Heather colorway. And I held that together with Knit Picks Aloft, which is the lace mohair. So it's, um, the Knit Picks Aloft is in the Kanai colorway and it's 72% Super Kid Mohair, 28% Silk. I started these on August 12th and I finished them on August 23rd. So they worked up a lot quicker and well, they're thicker yarn and the leg is quite a bit shorter than normal. So anyway, they worked up really quickly for me for socks because a lot of times it takes me a month to make a pair of socks. So I was super happy to have those work up so quickly and I'm just thrilled with how they turned out. So those are all of my finished objects for this episode. So I'll go on to my works in progress. I have an update on my floral hexagon motifs that I'm making. I've made three more. So I am planning on making this into a blanket eventually. I need to make a total of 28 of these full floral motifs. And then I'm going to be joining them together using bare yarn, making more hexagons and joining with a round of bare colored hexagons in between each of my motifs and I will be piecing them together with a row in between. So it'll kind of look like this. And I'm just having so much fun pairing all these different colors together. They're all fingering weight yarns, mostly sock yarns, but some may not have, you know, it may not be a sock specific yarn, but fingering weight. I'm using a, U a C hook 2.75 millimeter I am following a tutorial that I have here on my YouTube channel for the Hexi Scrappy blanket, which I have here behind me on my chair. In the tutorial, I go over how to make those hexagons and I show you how I join as I go, which is what I'm doing for this as well. I do change colors for in the tutorial for each hexagon. I use three different colors in each hexagon, but for this, I am using just one solid color for the entirety of each hexagon. Oh, I think they're so beautiful. I'm so pleased with how these are all turning out. They're so much fun to make and I just love seeing the different color combinations. Oh, I think it's gonna be so much fun to start piecing it all together. After I finish the 28, so I have, this is number 19. So I've made 19 full motifs now. And so I only have nine more to go of the full motifs. And then I need to make four almost half motifs. They'll actually be like this, if I remember right. I think it's about, so it's not, it's a little more than half of a motif, but I need four about this size to finish off the edge. And then I can start piecing them all together. And I'm so excited to do that. I started this project on May 14th and so I'm slowly but surely working through them and I'm super excited about it. I actually have another, I've never shown one in progress before I don't think, but I'm always holding my scraps of yarn that I'm working up in this little hexagon bag which I thought was fitting. <laughs> I got this on Etsy a long time ago and now I can't remember the name of the store, but um, she doesn't sell bags very often. She does, some, she does sell some quilted items and they're beautiful, but I have a couple of bags from her, but she doesn't often sell little bags like this. But I'll try to remember to link that or put it on the screen here if I can remember who or if I can figure out where which Etsy shop I got this little bag from. So the um, amount of yarn that I need for these hexes is very little. You only need two grams for each hexagon. When you're doing the joining method, as you go, you do use a little bit more yarn. So on the second round of hexes, 
I use a total of 13.3 grams. And for the final round, which uses 12 hexes altogether, that takes about 25 grams of yarn. And I've just started another one. So this is my center color. And this is gonna be my second round color. So I need to do five more of those. And then my final color, although I have like just 25 grams of this, so I hope that I'll have enough. <laughs> but this is some yarn that I dyed myself. And that will be the final color for this floral motif. So they are just, I just am still really enjoying the process of making these motifs. So I hope I continue to, especially once I get to the, I'm excited to get to the stage where I'm putting in the bare colored, but I imagine that when I'm doing that, I'm going to get kind of tired of just making bare colored motif or uh, hexagons. So hopefully I'll keep motivated by seeing it come together once I get to that stage, but... I have an update on a project that I shared a couple of episodes ago, and I am not super happy with how it's coming along. So I had made a smaller crocheted bag using some worsted weight cotton yarn that I was, I'm very happy with how that turned out. But, and then I wanted to make a larger one in the same fashion, but just like quite a bit larger, using up more worsted weight 100% cotton yarn. And so last time I shared this with you, I had finished the base and was working up the sides. And I have a marker here. This is where I was last time I shared this project. This is a progress keeper that my cousin Allie made for me. So cute. And all of this yarn was gifted to me by viewers of this channel. But it's just, I'm for one, not enjoying the process of making this. I really don't want to work on it <laughs> anymore. I'm kind of, I don't know, I just don't have the desire to work on this. It's not bringing me a lot of joy. And I just don't think it's going to turn out very well because as you can see, the sides, it's just too big and floppy. I mean, it would probably work for a bag, but I like my smaller one because the edge and the sides stand up. They don't collapse like this one is doing. But I think this one is just too big that it can't hold the weight of this, you know, it doesn't have as much structure. So I'm thinking I'm gonna frog this because I'm just not happy with it and I don't wanna work on it anymore. So I'm probably gonna let it sit for a little while, but I'm not working on it and I'm not enjoying it. So I think I'm probably gonna rip it out and use the yarn for something else. I, I don't know, I guess if you want more details on how I did this, then check out, I'm pretty sure I went over it two episodes ago, so you could check that out, but I'm not gonna go over a lot of the details since I don't plan on continuing this project anymore. All right, another uh, work in progress update is my Romance Cardigan, which is a pattern by Trico Design MCL. It's being held in this beautiful bag made by Joy in the Stitches. And I've made some good progress on this. Last time I recorded, I had split for the sleeves and was working my way down the body. I finished another skein of yarn for the main body. I've now used two full skeins in the main body. And then I decided to go on to knit one of the sleeves. And I have just gotten to the point where I can start the cuff ribbing. So that is my next step. So I fin basically, you know, almost finished one of the two sleeves. So here is a marker showing where I was last time I recorded. So I just did a couple more inches on the body before I went into the sleeve. I've never made a sleeve like this before with uh, using short rows to make a sleeve cap. And I really love how that looks. It's so neat and tailored looking, I think. I'm really happy with that. The yarn that I'm using is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes and the Sport Weight in the Pompous Heather colorway. This is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And I can try this on because I have it on two 
I put it on two needles so that it's long enough because I've been trying it on a lot to make sure that the sleeve length is good. I am making the medium size. I'm using smaller needles because I have a loose gauge when knitting typically. So I'm using US six four millimeter needles. I There's two different uh, instructions for the sleeves. There's a balloon, I think maybe she calls it, a balloon sleeve or a straight sleeve. And I am doing the straight sleeve. And I'm really happy with that. But then there's no decreases throughout the sleeve. It's just straight knitting, which is what I typically do when I make sweaters for myself anyway. I really like the fit of just a straight sleeve without a lot of tapering. So that's looking good. I think I'm happy with the length of the sleeves. And I really like the fit of the actual body of the cardigan as well. I think it's looking good. It will eventually be edged with some crocheted scalloped edging along the um, edges here. <laughs> I'm excited for that part as well. So yeah, it's coming along pretty well. I have basically used, well, I've used one full skein of yarn for this sleeve, and this is my second one. So basically I'm gonna be using two skeins of yarn for each sleeve. And then, is there one more in here? I'm trying to think of how much. I have one more in here. So then I'll have, I think, three more skeins left over to finish off the body and the scalloping. The scalloped edging goes around, you know, goes just along the cardigan opening section, if that makes sense. I'll show you a picture if I can find one. Here it is. So as you can see, the scalloping goes all the way around the neckline and then down the button band. I wish I knew how much that was gonna take. <laughs> you know, I wish I could know exactly how much yarn I need to save for that because I'd like to make this cardigan as long as possible. I think, I usually make my cardigans pretty cropped, but I thought it might be kind of nice to have this one a little longer, but I only have three extra skeins for the rest of the body and you know, I haven't gotten far at all yet. So I don't know, I definitely, I don't think it'll take a whole skein for sure, but crocheting does take more than knitting. So the, the ribbing is first knit and then edged with the crocheting. It would probably be smart for me to save almost a whole skein for that, just I don't know, what are your thoughts? How much do you think it will take to do that ribbing, just the ribbing along the button band and the neckline? It probably won't take a full skein, will it? They're 50 gram skeins. And there are 137 yards per skein. I don't know, I, wouldn't, I don't know how I would calculate that. I mean, I suppose I could if I was really good at math. <laughs> so I could maybe figure out how much the ribbing takes along the hemline. But still then I wouldn't, at that point, I would, I would need to know it before that. I don't know. Maybe I could calculate how much one skein, how much length one skein gets me and then do a calculation of how many stitches that is and compare it to the ribbing. That seems like a lot though. <laughs> I just wish I knew how much I needed to save for the edging so that I could make it as long as possible. But I guess I could always order more if I needed to because, you know, the dye lot probably wouldn't be too hard to match. And if it's just for the ribbing, it wouldn't matter if it was off just a little bit. For If I used a different skein for, oh, I'm twisted around this. If I used a different skein for the ribbing, I don't know. But anyway. Or maybe I don't want it really long. Maybe I'd like it shorter. We'll see. I started this cardigan on July 18th. So it's coming along and the sleeves were so nice to knit on. I just used a short circular 
needle for the sleeves and that was so nice. I could just knit those without looking and they seemed to work up really, that one sleeve seemed to work up pretty quickly for me using that method. So I'm really happy with that. The next work in progress that I have an update on, I'm holding in this basket that I thrifted. And it is a crochet baby blanket that I'm working on. It is another free pattern. It actually came on the label of one of these skeins of yarn. It is pictured right here. And it is called the Summer Ripple Crochet Blanket. And it comes on this Karen Simply Soft yarn. So I think the pattern can be found on Yarn Yarnspiration's website. I started this on July 17th. I am using all Karen Simply Soft yarn that was gifted to me by viewers of this channel. And the main color I'm using is Simply Soft Party in the Violet Variegated colorway. That has the metallic, a little metallic strip through it. So it is 99% acrylic and 1% metallic polyester. The other colors I'm using are just Karen Simply Soft in solid colors. The first is, and so these are all 100% acrylic yarns. The first one is purple and orchid, and then also the white that I shared. So I am making a baby blanket size. So I did cast on or started a chain with less stitches. I'm using an H five millimeter hook and I have eight repeats of the scalloped pattern. Um, I don't count my stitches. I just make a long chain until it is the right length that I think will look good for the pattern. And then I undo those extra chain stitches that I have inevitably left over. <laughs> So I have started with a thicker band of the main color, the glittery yarn. And, but then throughout the rest of the blanket, I'm using thinner strips of that glittery color until I get to the other end. I plan on using another thick, making another thick band of that yarn. In between each of the um, main color stripes, I'm doing thicker stripes of the contrasting colors. So there's a total of eight rows to start off with, and then eight rows of the solid color, four rows of the main color, eight rows of the solid. And I'll repeat that until I get to the other end. So I'm going to do the purple, orchid, white, and then I'm gonna do orchid purple to end it off. So it will be symmetrical from top to bottom, if that makes sense. There is a progress keeper right here. That's marking where I was when I shared this two episodes ago. I haven't worked on this a ton, obviously, but I have made a little bit of progress on it and I'm planning to try to get more focused on this project now. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I've mentioned before that this pattern is not mindless. You have to do quite a bit of counting to keep track of the scallops, but it's so beautiful. I just think it's so pretty the way that the, the pattern works up. I do want to try to give this a steam to see if it will, because right now you can kind of see it's kind of squinched up a little bit. It's not laying really flat. It's got a lot of texture to it which is okay, I think it'll be fine if it doesn't, but I, I think it probably would look pretty cool if it laid a little bit more flat. So I think maybe if I steam it with my iron, it will probably lay a little bit more nicely. But I haven't done that yet. But it's really enjoyable, I love it, and I have figured out that I don't have to do as much counting as I was originally. I just really have to keep track of my stitches on the top of the scallops now. So it's getting a little easier as I work on it more and more, which is to be expected. <laughs> but yeah, I think that one should probably work up pretty quickly now that I'm kind of focusing on it a little bit more than I have been. Okay, my last work in progress is being held in this bag that I also received in a swap, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I love this bag, I think it's so sweet. 
and I am making, I hope he's not in the house that he can hear me. I'm pretty sure he's outside. I just heard the lawnmower start up and I bet he's the one running it. I'm making a pair of socks for my oldest son who is turning 16 next month. And I don't knit socks for my kids that often, especially my older boys, because they're just super hard on socks. They're always outside working, wearing work boots and getting filthy. <laughs> but I think that he will really appreciate having these socks and I'm gonna, you know, say, maybe we should just keep them, maybe like not wear them outside in your work boots basically, <laughs> so they won't get gross. Anyway, um, I am making him some socks using some Patton's Croix yarn in the 50s stripes colorway. And I originally had purchased three balls or skeins of this yarn. It was on clearance for only $2.24 a skein at Hobby Lobby. And I already knit a pair of socks for my husband using this yarn, which I shared on my last episode. They were shorties, so they didn't take too much yarn. So I had one full skein before I started these, but boy, that doesn't look like it was a full skein and I've only knit this little bit, but I'm pretty sure it was. And then I have a bunch of leftovers. So I'm a little bit nervous if I'm gonna have enough for my son for these socks, but I do have extra scraps of Patton's Croy that I can work in if needed. Hopefully it'll work out, I don't know. I also wanna make these pretty long because my son loves his socks pulled up really high, almost to his knees, but not quite, but pretty tall up onto the you know higher part of his calf anyway. I cast on 56 stitches. I'm using um, US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needles because um, this yarn, even though it's classified as fingering weight, is thicker. So it is, a, for a 50 gram ball, you get 166 yards or 152 meters. It's 75% wool, 25% nylon. And so I cast on 56 stitches and did two by two ribbing. I don't know how many rows that was, did I mark it? 26 rounds for the cuffs. I just did it until the color stripe, the, you know, the colors repeated again. So once I got through all of the colors, then I started working plain stockinette. And once I went through another color stripe sequence, I reduced my stitches to 52 stitches. And then I'm gonna work a little bit, probably through another stripe repeat and reduce again. Cause I think for, his feet are just a tiny bit bigger than mine right now. And I think for me, I would wanna have around 50 stitches for my foot using this yarn, I think. For my husband's, I think I had 56 stitches and he has larger feet than my son. So I think it will work for me to just reduce by a few more stitches for the main part of the foot. So I'm gonna continue trying them on my leg because I want it to be a surprise for him. Um, and hopefully his legs are probably a little bit skinnier than mine, but um, hopefully I can kind of get an idea of how they'll fit if I keep trying them on my legs and do the best I can to make them fit his feet. But anyway, they're super simple right now. His birthday is in the middle of September, so I need to kind of focus on these because I only have a couple of weeks before his birthday, and I really want to make sure I get them done in time, so I need to kind of probably put a lot of work into these as well. But I'm the second skein, you can see, is just this little tiny bit. That's all I have left of that. But then I do have... few extra little balls. I have this much of little scraps, but I want to try to keep the stripe sequence in the right order. So I don't know. We'll see. They might end up being pretty scrappy in the end, but I'm trying to get them as matchy as possible for now. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Those are all of my works in progress. That's all I have to share with you all today. I hope that you enjoyed seeing the things that I am working on and I hope that you're enjoying the things that you're working on as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.